Well, good morning, members and friends of the River Bend Pentecostals. I didn't think we would be doing this again, but uh, we are, and uh, we've certainly been blessed throughout this whole pandemic, and now it has fallen our lot to have these struggles ourselves. Thank you for joining with us today. We don't really know what the future holds, but uh, today we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. We're going to spend a little time together in the Word, and then we're going to leave you with something perhaps that will uh, help you through this time that we have to be a part. The virus has hit several members of the River Bend community. Uh, yesterday we knew of five that were uh, for sure positive, along with a few others that are exhibiting some symptoms. Uh, we do not know if it was at church. Matter of fact, we know that some of them were not at church where they contracted the virus, but nevertheless, we have been together and uh, we certainly want to pray. So we're just going to, without further ado, we're going to pray for those that the uh, virus has hit and that are affected by it, uh, either directly or indirectly. So if you pray with us right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. You have been so good to us and so gracious and kind, and you will continue to be so. And now we have entered into an arena that thousands of others have already been in, and uh, this virus has hit our community. And I pray, God, for everyone that's sick. I pray for our elders. I pray for our children. I pray for our young adults, our college and career, young marrieds, every uh, demographic of our church has been affected by this. God, and I pray under the authority and the power of the name of Jesus uh, that you will let us ride this storm safely. I pray you'll be with us. Lord, we, if it were possible, we wake you now to speak to the storm. We ourselves speak to this storm that has hit us, commanded to peace be still. I believe, God, that you're going to be with us and you're going to correct us, protect us, be with us, and whatever we need, you're going to be there because we trust you. The psalmist said, what time I'm afraid, I will trust you. So, Lord, that's where we are. We don't have the answers. It appears no one does, but we know that you do. And, God, we trust you. Believe for your healing power. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We want to pray again. Uh, the next prayer we're going to pray is for our country. We want to pray that the will of God is done in the upcoming election. Not my will, but thine be done has to be the prayer that we pray. So would you pray with us right now for the United States, for Missouri, for our local area. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come to you now because we know your word says that you set those up in authority and you take them down. I pray, God, for the upcoming election. I pray, Lord, that your will is done. Whomever that you want to lead our country, I pray that's who you put there. I pray that we flow in accord with your will. I pray, God, that you will bless the United States of America, bless our leadership, bless the Supreme Court, the members of Congress, and the President, all of our leadership, God. We pray that you'll bless them and lead them. I pray, God, that the church can be the vehicle whereby unity comes back into our world, back into our church. I pray, God, that we do not divide along party lines or along uh, platforms, but, Lord, that we stand united upon the Word of God. It is the only thing that stands sure. It has stood since the beginning of time, and it will continually. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your Word will not pass away. Let us believe that, stand upon it, and trust in that truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And lastly, today we're going to pray for our time together. Uh, we're going to pray for the will of God to be revealed to us during this trying time. We pray that our faith will not decrease, but in fact increase during this uh, uh, pandemic and as it has affected us personally. And we pray that lives will be changed and the Holy Ghost and the power of God will be manifest in them. He did say it'll happen, but it won't be by might, not by power but by my spirit, saith the Lord. We have no choice but to trust in the spirit of God and the power of his word. So let's pray for our time together today. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come together. Our church members are scattered at their homes and some are afflicted and some are afraid. And Lord, I pray that our faith will rise during this time. Our faith doesn't stand in the wisdom of man, nor does it fall in the failure of man, but our faith stands in the power of God. I pray that our faith will grow during this time that we're, some of us quarantined and we're separated from one another. We can't meet in your house. 
I pray, God, that we will stay unified in spirit and stay unified in our faith. I pray that lives will be changed, God, that there will be people touched by watching this online gathering that we have here today and be inspired and drawn to come to worship with us when we're able to again very soon, we hope. I pray these things and ask these favors. Bless everything we do today. Let our words be your words. and Let our mind and our thoughts be in line with what you want and what you think. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. I want to make some announcements before we get into the word today. There will be no meetings this week uh, in-house at the River Bend Pentecostals. Monday night prayer is canceled. Wednesday night Bible study will be online, but it will not be in-house. And Thursday night's recovery is canceled. And we, uh, uh, for this week, everything is canceled. And then beginning uh, next Sunday, we'll have a, a plan in place. Not sure what's going to happen right now, but uh, for now, every meeting is canceled at the River Bend Pentecostals in-house. We will meet Wednesday night at 7 p.m. for Wednesday night Bible study right here from my couch where my family and I are quarantining right now, and we will be together. Uh, next Sunday is to be determined, and uh, we're going to uh, uh, do what we can and uh, follow along with what we're doing, but we will stay in contact with you at various times throughout the week. Trunk or treat has been canceled. We're not going to be able to do it this year, but the Lord willing, we will be able to again in the future. We want to remind you that we need to continue to give. The kingdom of God must go forward. The ministries that the River Bend Pentecostals invest in must continue, and of course, we have to continue to pay our bills. So if you'd like to send in your offering, uh, you can send it in via regular mail, Post Office Box 477, New Madrid, Missouri, 63869. We do, of course, have the Givelify app, which many use. We have PayPal through our website. And then if you would care to drop your tithing or your offerings off here at the house in the mailbox, you can just leave them there. Just send me a text and let us know that they're there, and uh, we will go out and get them very promptly. We, we thank you for your giving throughout this pandemic. The, the River Bend has been incredible in your giving. We're so thankful for your giving, your sacrifice in giving, your support of ministries, missionaries. Um, it, it's uh, the words can't really describe how blessed we are at the River Bend Pentecostals. And we will continue to do so, we believe, with all of our heart. I want to take you to the word of the Lord. It was in prayer last Thursday that the Lord began to work with me uh, and work on my mind about a word for you this morning. I felt this morning in prayer that uh, uh, I need to give a certain sound. Uh, as the pastor of the River Bend Pentecostals, God called, God placed, and God ordained, I believe I have to give a certain sound uh, to this church. In Matthew chapter number 4, we find that Jesus is led by the Spirit. He wasn't led by the flesh. The devil didn't take him there, but he was led by the Spirit to the wilderness to be tempted or to be tested of the devil. The wilderness is a desolate, barren place. But if you look at it in the, in the original Greek, you will find that sometimes the wilderness is a necessary place because the Lord has to get us away. And I'm looking at it un, unequivocally as that right now. To be tempted or to be tested of the devil simply means to be tried, to be tested, or to be uh, validated to see if you have what it takes. But it was there in the wilderness the Lord was led there where he first fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And afterward, he was hungry. He was vulnerable. He was weak. He had a desire in his flesh, a need in his flesh. It wasn't just a, a want to hungry, but he was hungry. His body was lacking in the necessary food for strength, and he became vulnerable in his flesh. In his teaching, uh, Luke 15, among other places, Jesus speaks of the commonly known occurrence of when the shepherd would become aware of a lost sheep. He would leave the 99 in the wilderness while he began to search for that one lost lamb. So it is of certainty that there will be times when we have to be left in the wilderness, perhaps in a vulnerable condition for the ultimate purpose of the shepherd searching for the lost sheep. 
It is of equal a certainty that we will not be left in the wilderness without being prepared to not only survive in the wilderness, but to thrive in the wilderness. It is not the Lord's will that we be overcome by the things of the world, but it is the Lord's will that we believe that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. The wilderness in the history of the Jews was always representative of a time of preparation, a time of perfecting, with its source, of course, being when the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness uh, with the purpose of being perfected for entrance into the promised land. Jesus, in Matthew chapter number 4, is in the wilderness. He's in a desolate, barren, dry, lonely place. He is away from everyone else, away from his family, away from uh, uh, the, what was familiar to him, and he is in the wilderness, and he is vulnerable. He is weak. He is uh, in his flesh lacking and, and doesn't uh, have a solution or an answer for it at this point in time. And he is there in that condition to be tested of the devil. He responds to three different temptations or three different tests all the same manner. First thing the devil says, if you be the son of God, turn these stones into bread. And, uh, of course, that was to instill doubt as in Jesus as to who he was. And, and it was also, of course, to get him uh, to take a shortcut to satisfy this flesh. And, and Jesus wasn't interested in doing neither of those things. He wasn't interested in bowing down to the, in this case, logic of the devil. But he responds to each of these three things with the same response. He said, it is written. And then he quotes a passage of scripture that de directly contradicts or countermands or validates the position of Jesus Christ uh, against the temptation or the test of the enemy. It is no accident. Jesus intentionally took those scriptures and uh, all three of those scriptures that Jesus responds to the enemy's test with come from the book of Deuteronomy. Now, the book of Deuteronomy consists almost entirely of the uh, farewell messages from Moses to the children of Israel. They were spoken to a group of people who have been through the wilderness, who now stand on the precipice or stand on the edge of going into the promised land, of fulfilling the promise of God to his people. They were believers who had endured and uh, they were full of faith. They were full of hope. They were full of promise in the power of God. The unbelief had been purged, as it were, from the children of Israel. And the time has come for them to enter into the promised land. It would seem that these speeches are offered to the children of Israel in the last month of the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. Now, Jesus is in the wilderness he is in the presence of the enemy. He is in a time of testing and a time of temptation, but he uses words from a time of preparation to enter into the promises of God. He uses words given to the people of God at the end of their journey in the wilderness, at the end of their time of perfection. Jesus will leave the wilderness. He will leave the wilderness launched into his destiny, into his purpose of his ministry. Jesus will walk out of this wilderness preaching the message of repentance and salvation through Jesus Christ. He will blaze the trail and make the path whereby all men and women will walk. The death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the, the groundwork was laid in the wilderness. Let us now, the members of the River Bend Pentecostals, in this time of uh, shutting down, the third time we have had to shut down because of this virus. The first time was we didn't know. We just shut down in case it might happen. The second time we had a couple of positive tests that shut us down. This time it appears uh, that, that our community is being inundated uh, with the, the positive test and, and people that are sick in their body. Uh, but let us not be 
weary in well-doing. Let us not be down or disheartened, but be aware that when the Lord was in the middle of his trial, when he was in the middle of his test, he used the book of Deuteronomy. He used the scriptures of Deuteronomy to minister not only to the enemy, but to himself, because the Deuteronomy is the launching place, the launching point. Jesus was planning on coming out while he was in the middle of it. I call the river bend today to a purpose, to a destiny. We have great things that are happening in our services and, and great growth is being experienced in the men and the women of the River Bend Pentecostals. Uh, this is not to knock us back, knock us down. The enemy is not winning. Uh, but this is a time of preparation, a time of purpose uh, where we will be launched into our destiny. Uh, we will say, it is written. Uh, it is written in the word. Uh, I shall not die but live uh, and declare the works of the Lord. God has great things in store for the River Bend Pentecostals. Uh, he has a great plan and a great purpose in place for us, uh, and this is part of his plan. So I call you to an awareness today. Maybe not the exact same scriptures uh, that the Lord used. It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. It is written, uh, uh, the, Thou shalt uh, worship, uh, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It is written, uh, uh, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And then it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. Uh, the, we may not use those exact words, but somewhere in the book of Deuteronomy, the Lord told me to tell you today, uh, in the book of Deuteronomy, which is the end of wondering, we have to launch ourselves uh, by faith. Uh, through the book of Deuteronomy, in the middle of the test, in the middle of the trial, in the middle of the temptation, we know we're coming out. And we're not just coming out into any old place. We're coming out into the promised land. It is for this promised land we were created. It is for this place we were planted here. The Bible says the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man who found in a field a pearl of great price. He went and sold everything he had. I feel that in my spirit today. He went and sold everything he had and bought that field because in that field was the pearl of great price. I felt so strongly in my spirit today as I prayed this morning. The field where I am, the field where we are, is where the pearl of great price is. It, we can't hold anything back, River Bend. We can't hold anything back, uh, ladies and gentlemen, friends, members, guests, brothers and sisters uh, of the River Bend Pentecostals. Uh, we cannot hold back anything uh, expecting something else. Uh, this is it. Uh, we are where God wants us. Uh, we are with who God wants us to be with. Uh, and there are yet men and women that the Lord is bringing in. Uh, the treasure is in this field. Uh, the pearl is in this field. We've got to be sold out completely. Uh, we've got to be sold out. Jesus Christ knew who he was. Uh, he wasn't taking shortcuts. Uh, he wasn't bowing down to the enemy because he had a ministry. You've got a ministry. You've got a destiny. You've got a purpose on your life. And together we will march into the promised land and we will experience everything God has for us. But we need to be here. We need to be here. We're not going to try to rush to get out, but we're going to say, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Lord, I see the vision ahead of us, and I know where you brought me from. I know the sins that you've cleaned me, cleansed me from, forgiven me from, and I know the vision that you've given me. We will not be bogged down by the trials of the present, but we will speak faith, we will speak hope, and we will speak love, because these three abide, and the greatest is love. Pray with us right now. The book of Deuteronomy. That's where you're going to find your comfort and your answers and your directions. Uh, the Lord told me to tell you today, just as he in the wilderness uh, combated the powers of the devil himself, uh, we will come together and be renewed in our faith uh, and in our purpose and our destiny. And the book of Deuteronomy is going to be our security blanket as we drive through this uh, valley of the shadow of death, as it were. Pray with us right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will not let this leave our minds. 
I pray, God, that you will uh, affirm us and validate us and renew us in the, the spirit of our mind, that we'll be transformed by the renewing of our minds. I pray that the, those that are listening to us even now or perhaps will watch later, I pray, God, that they will go to the book of Deuteronomy and there find direction and there find comfort. It is your word, God, and your word, Lord, stands forever. Your word is powerful. Your word is pertinent. Your word written thousands of years ago is far right now. It applies. You've given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness uh, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. I pray again for those that are sick in their body. I pray for those that were going through a wilderness before the pandemic ever hit. Uh, I pray, God, there will be a renewing of purpose and destiny and direction and faith uh, and consecration. I pray, God, we will come back to church uh, stronger than we left it. Uh, we will not go back but we will go forwards by faith because it is written. It is written, and it's in the Word we'll find our help. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for joining us. We love you. I'll be in touch with you in the next couple of three days. Maybe we'll meet three or four times this week just as the Lord directs us. We love you. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you again soon. Love you.